Hello fellow nerds Today we are looking at Volo's Guide to Monsters Deluxe again And last time we covered the giants And today we are going to have a look at monster lore again And this time it's going to be about Nulls The insatiable hunger Nulls remind the world of the horrors posed by the hordes of the abyss and the damage that even the briefest demonic incursion can inflict on the world. Whenever the demon lord Yenugu enters the material plane and goes on a rampage, he leaves a great trail of corpses in his wake. As the lord of savagery despoils the land, Packs of hyenas trail him and feast on the victims until the dead flesh of Yenugu's prey leave them bloated and unable to move. Then, in a shower of blood and gristle, the hyenas transform into gnolls, which take up Yenugu's awful mission to kill and destroy anything in their path. Nolts embody the dark urges of Yenogu, the demon lord of slaughter and senseless destruction. Although Yenogu has been defeated and cast back into the abyss more than once, Nolts continue to pursue his horrid, apocalyptic vision of a world transformed into a barren, empty ruin with only the decaying corpses of the last few surviving nodes left to mark its passing. As creatures that sprang up in the wake of a demon lord, gnolls are creatures of savage bloodlust, incapable of understanding or acting on any other impulse. They are extensions of Yenogu's will. They pose only to devour what they have killed and to fashion crude weapons and armor from their victims' corpses. A null warband exemplifies Yenogu's plans for the world. He wants to transform it into a vicious realm of endless fighting. When the last battle ends, Yenogu will enter the world, slay its last surviving champion and preside over a wasteland of rotting corpses. To Yenugu, pure destruction is beauty. Yenugu imparts to the minds of his followers an unquenchable, supernatural hunger, both for violence and for the flesh of intelligent creatures. A gnoll feels a constant, gnawing demand for blood and destruction that abates only when it kills and eats intelligent creatures. Other prey might provide temporary sustenance, but it does nothing to quell Yenugu's hunger. Gnolls wander the land continually in search of new victims rarely sleeping and never settling down. Only a large-scale assault, such as the massacre of an entire village, can satisfy their desire even temporarily. A sated knoll rests, knowing that it has pleased Yenugu. Its relief is short, no more than a few days before the knoll once again becomes a slave to its desires. Strength, hunger and fear are the three concepts that every null extols. Strength allows a null to overwhelm, kill and devour a foe. Hunger motivates a null to go forth and slay in Yenugu's name. Fear is a weapon used against enemies to make them easy prey. In concert, all three play a role in advancing Yenogu's goals. Of all the demon lords, Yenogu is perhaps the most active on the material plane. 
He shows support to his followers by sending them omens in form of visions, dreams and signs. As such, gnolls instinctively look for such omens to guide their activities and they find them in many places. Among the signs that gnolls rely on are the blood trails and spatters left behind after making a meal of an intelligent humanoid. They attach significance to a number of other phenomena as well, including the sight of arrows in flight, the rush of the wind, and sounds of howling or cackling laughter that have no discernible source. Few creatures, aside from gnolls, worship Yenugu, and those that do mimic gnolls in their action and beliefs. Yenogu's cultists are folk who lack all hope and have descended into nihilism. One might have suffered a tremendous personal loss, been banished from its home, or been the victim of a terrible betrayal. Whatever the reason, the would-be cultist is left isolated and abandoned, making it vulnerable to Yenogu's teachings. The creature's thoughts and dreams are plagued by visions sent by Yenogu. The promise of ultimate power, fueled by acts of brutality, tempt and tormented. Most folk ascribe these feelings to a fleeting bout of depression or madness and are able to resist the call to violence, but a few cannot. For these rare individuals, the true lure of Yenogu's promises lies not in the power they offer, but in the deep sense of belonging they create. Those that are swayed by his offer consider themselves gnaws in mind and deed, and soon set out to commit their first atrocities in Yenogu's name. Most of these cultists are almost as quickly killed by guards or other authorities. A few escape into the wilderness and continue to rampage on their own, perhaps eventually falling in league with a Noel war band. Noles might seem to throw themselves into battle mindlessly, driven only by fury and hunger, but they do possess a rudimentary form of cunning that is borne out by several tactics they use consistently. Butcher the weak. Gnolls seek only to kill and as such prefer to deal with weak, easy targets. An enemy that can fight back is an enemy to save for later. Gnolls have no sense of honor, glory or individual achievement. They care only for the raw number of creatures they can slay. In the face of a Gnoll incursion, it is best for refugees to seek shelter in castles and other fortified positions. Gnolls avoid protracted battles if they can, much preferring to slaughter those that can't defend themselves. Overwhelm the strong. Gnolls attack intelligent prey that is capable of resisting them only when the most powerful omens from Yenogu compel them to do so. They cooperate to gang up on each of the individuals in a group of, group of explorers or adventurers. Or if the prey is more numerous, they rush forward in waves. The creatures will crawl over their own dead to climb a castle's wall and kill all within it. A commonly held belief is that a fortress besieged by gnolls need ten arrows for each one to keep the creatures from scaling the walls. Spread far and wide. Gnolls never set up permanent camps, though they might linger for a few days at the site of a particularly great slaughter as they devour the corpses of both their victims and the gnolls killed in battle. 
During this time, the hyenas that follow a pack of gnolls feast until they become bloated, then burst open to spawn more gnolls. In this manner, they replenish their ranks before wandering off in ragged bands to continue their rampage. Kill from a distance Almost every gnoll carries a bow, scavenged from a past victim. Gnolls use ranged attacks mainly to prevent their prey from fleeing, rather than softening up their targets with an initial barrage of arrows before an assault. A target wounded by a bow shot becomes easy prey for any gnolls near it. Some particularly clever gnolls have been known to use burning arrows to spark fires cutting off their prey's escape routes and driving victims into their jaws. Leave no survivors. A band of gnolls lives in a state of eternal war with everything it encounters, aside from fellow worshippers of Yenobu. To keep from being detected between major raids, the gnolls move through the wilderness with as much stealth stealth as they can marshal. They never leave survivors in any group they set upon and will pursue a fleeing enemy for days to prevent it from getting to a town or city and raising an alarm. If the area they hunt in becomes too well defended, the not relocate in search of easier prey. Large tracts along the fringe of civilization might be devastated before the wilder, before the wider world becomes aware of a null threat. A cautious and killed gang can follow in the tracks of a null warband, keeping hidden and waiting for the creatures to move on after ravaging a village or town. The gnolls leave the town's gold and gems and other durable goods battered and gnawed, but still intact, though they invariably ruin delicate or flammable objects in their fits of destruction. Gnolls do possess a basic understanding of the value of weapons and armor, so one might decide to hold onto an object seen as useful. In this way, a gnoll might come to possess a magic item, though it might not know exactly how to use it. They regard objects of treasure only in terms of their ability to cause harm or preserve a gnoll's life. Everything else is fit only for destruction. The language of gnolls, such as it is, consists of whines, cackles and howls, mixed with gestures and expressions. They use it to communicate only basic concepts, such as an alert about approaching prey, or a call to their allies to join the fray. When they fight among themselves, they rarely bother with threats or words before leaping at each other's throats. When no leaders must share complex concepts with each other, they use a broken form of abyssal, gifted to them by Yenobu. The null language lacks a script or written form, though elite gnolls can use their limited knowledge of abyssal to leave messages. In most cases, though, a null warband has little use for written notes or signs. They simply wander, attack, kill and feed. Anything more sophisticated is beyond the band's concern. A null war band is likely could is likely to contain a variety of gnolls and other creatures and no two of these groups have the same composition. The nodes that make up the rank and file have different attributes and thus different roles in the warband's assaults. Augmenting the warriors that comprise the bulk of the force are the hunters, specialists in sneaking and attacking at range, 
and the flesh gnaws, which rely on natural savagery rather than weapons to tear apart their foes. A pack of hyenas is always part of the band, and sometimes these beasts are as numerous as the gnolls themselves. A war band that has been through hard times might contain a number of gnoll witherlings, while one that enjoys Yinogu's favour might be led by a flint, the scarcest and strongest of all gnolls. It's also possible, though quite rare, for a warband to include cultists, other humanoids that have dedicated themselves to Yinogu and attach themselves to the warband to prove their loyalty. Each of these elements of a warband is further described below. Let's have a look. A no pack lord. Most warbands are led by pack lords. These champions of Yinogu carry their lord's favor with living sacrifices. They mark their hides with bloody runes, which sometimes grant supernatural power conferred by Yinogu himself. Pack lords favor big, heavy weapons, such as glaives and axes. No fangs of Yinogu. Fangs of Yinogu are gifted with the power to spawn more gnolls. They anoint the remains of their foes using bizarre rituals. A hyena that feeds on such a corpse spawns a gnoll, while other humanoids who join in the feast become cultists of Yenogu. Fangs use their claws in battle, the better to imbue their victims with the magic needed to spawn more gnolls. Gnoll warriors Common gnolls comprise the bulk of a warband. They fight mainly with spears and fas fashioned from wood and bone. While they lack any particular blessing of Yenogu, their ferocity makes them formidable enemies. Gnoll Hunters When a warband is on the move, the hunters travel in a wide arc around the perimeter of the force. Hunters are more adept than other gnolls at sneaking and moving through an area undetected, which makes them useful for reconnaissance. Sometimes a team of hunters is used to silently pick off sentries on patrol before they can raise an alarm, which makes the upcoming onslaught by the rest of the warband even more lethal. Another function that hunters perform is to trail along behind a warband, making quick work of wounded gnolls and those who can't keep up the pace. Gnoll Flesh Gnawers All gnolls are ruthless and brutal, but the flesh gnawers in a warband use their quickness and agility to augment their savagery. At the start of a raid, they lurk around the edges of the gnoll forces, hoping to jump on enemies that become isolated. When they spring into action, their blades and teeth turn it into a whirling dealer of death, able to dash from one target to the next as though they have been shot from a bow. Gnoll Witherlings a warband might go for weeks without coming across the sort of prey it craves. Gnolls can eat, eat wild animals for sustenance, but only the flesh of intelligent humanoids can calm the endless hunger bestowed upon them by Yenogu. When a warband grows desperate for food, its members turn on each other. Those who succumb to the violence are devoured. But their service to the war band doesn't end at that point. The survivors preserve the bones of their fallen comrades so that a pack lord or a flint can perform a ritual to Hinogu to turn them into loyal, undead followers known as witherlings. Even after death, no witherlings 
serve the warband much, of their, much as their comrades do. Although not as formidable in battle as warriors or hunters, they are just as relentless. Flints. A flint is an exceptionally large and strong knoll. No warband contains more than one, and such a creature is always the leader of its band. A flint wields a weapon that carries Yenobu's blessing, a magical flay that saps the body and the mind of any foe that feels its touch. Because they are so rare, other knolls see, th see them as Yenobu's special messengers. Gifted with a keen eye for omens and an ear for Yenogu's whispers. Each day a flint consults the signs around it and determines the warband's direction. During a battle, a knoll that delivers the death, the death blow to a flint claims its flail and, in a burst of abyssal energy, is touched by Yenogu and turns into a flint itself. The death or disappearance of a flint for any other reason causes a warband to descend into brutal infighting. Sometimes a new leader emerges from the pack after putting down its rivals. More often the band fragments and the survivors go their separate ways. Cultists Rarely a warband includes orcs humans or other humanoids that have sworn loyalty to Yenogu. The gnolls treat those cultists as they would other gnolls, refraining from killing them so long as they join in the slaughter when the band finds prey. Almost all cultists are brutish individuals, touched by insanity, one step above the hyenas that trail behind the warband's path. They aren't gnolls and thus don't receive their inspiration directly from Yenogu. Yet, exceptions do occur. If an individual of great intelligence and great ability heeds Yenogu's call, the Lord of Savagery might elevate it to the leadership of its band. Such champions are rare and a band led by a cultist is capable of feats that are beyond a group of gnolls, accomplishment, accomplishments that combine the gnoll's savagery with a human-like level of intelligence and planning. Gnoll allies Gnolls wage war against any creature they meet. Except for those that have dedicated themselves to Yenogu, and those that act in accordance with his wishes. The Lord of Savagery stains the souls of his followers and kindred creatures in such a way that they and his gnolls recognize one another on sight and don't immediately leap into battle. Thus a warband might include or be accompanied by other beings of evil. Demons a fang of Yenugu is sometimes gifted with the cosmic insight needed to summon forth mindless demons. When Yenugu deigns to allow it, a warband might find itself augmented by some of his favorite demons, such as Balguras, Dretches, Hezrus, or Manes. The Lord of Savagery also has a special affinity for more demons would share his insatiable hunger. Demonic hyenas, known as Shosubas, are dispatched by Yenogu to aid his most exalted champions. Among the gnolls, the appearance of a Shosuva is a reward for recent triumphs and a harbinger of great victories and much feasting to come. A Shosuva protects the warband's most powerful members and serves as a companion to the strongest fang of Yenogu in the group. Ghouls Ghoul packs emerge from graveyards and dungeons to trail in the wake of a warband, 
feasting on the remains of its victims and sometimes eventually merging with the group. Although ghouls typically reveal Orcus, the endless hunger can prompt them to turn to Yenugu, hyenas. Large packs of hyenas follow no warbands. For their part, the gnolls largely ignore, largely ignore these animals. They tend to gather around fangs in battle, eager to partake of Yenugu's blessings and its horrid transformation. Loikrotas, brought forth during Yenugu's ancient incursions into the world, Loikrotas are bigger, smarter and faster than gnolls. When one joins a warband, it doesn't strive to lead the group, but rather to serve and protect its leader. A Loikrotas' dedication to Yenugu is as fervent as that of any gnoll and its main goal is always to advance the cause, the cause of the Lord of Savagery over its own. Trolls Of all the creatures encountered by gnolls, trolls are the most likely to join them simply because the gnolls' way of life appeals to them. As ravenous creatures with incredible toughness, Trolls fit well into the loose seam of a null warband. So much for the gnolls who do not have stat blocks. Interesting. This was by far the shortest monster lore we have encountered in Volo's guide, yet. And I have never encountered gnolls in a campaign, but I do remember they play a big role in a quest in um, the new Baldur's Gate game. And now a lot of what happened there makes sense. Law is such important to know, but it's also such a rabbit hole to fall into. As always, I hope you found this entertaining, relaxing, maybe you learned something and were inspired to use gnolls in your campaign. And I am looking very much forward to the next Monster Lore chapter in Volo's Guide. I think these videos might actually be my favorites to do. So, stay tuned. And until then, bye bye fellow nerds. <laughs>